Welcome to Unity Inspired Living. Our community began in 1989 as a small worldwide Unity book study group, and we've continued the momentum as an ever-evolving spiritual community. Each Sunday, you will find dynamic thought leaders delivering inspiring messages and talented musicians sharing sound healing through their melody. Here, we embrace ancient spiritual traditions, universal truths, and emerging wisdom. Let's check out this Sunday message. We're so grateful you've joined us. It warms my heart and lights up my soul to be here each week with you. My name is Amy Van Ling, and I am the spiritual director here at Unity Inspired Living, where we focus on conscious living, liberating belief systems, limiting belief systems. We have some limiting belief systems that sometimes run the show, and we don't even realize it. So we're here to kind of liberate that and bring our hearts to the community around us, the world around us. So thank you uh, for being here. Uh, we are an ever-evolving spiritual community. We are truly dedicated to personal and global transformation. We thank you for participating with us. It's a blessing, a blessing and a joy to be here alive, breathing for another mystical Sunday with you. Um, and you know what? It is one of my very favorite Sundays, Palm Sunday. And our theme for the year is a uh, spiritual pilgrimage journey of the soul. And our theme for this month has been journey with Jesus. And uh, this last week of the month is quite the journey with Jesus. Wouldn't you say, and Palm Sunday, you know, encapsulates such rich symbolism, uh, the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, notably on a humble donkey, you know, riding in not as this conquering king on horseback, but he rides in as this gent, gently, gent, gently as a compassionate teacher and lover and healer representing humility and peace and quietude and servant leadership. Um, and it's such a deeply profound message for us, you know, and uh, I've always, I've always loved Palm Sunday. Do you remember when I had the palm fronds for him when we would, we have Palm Sunday. Um, I just think of the people, you know, shouting Hosanna and signifying that yearning for, for salvation, for that liberation that we talk about from the worldly, worldly suffering. And so this time, as we you know, reflect on uh, the deep message of this sacred day and the journey through this my holy week, you know, leading to Easter, the Jesus story, um, that resurrection, you know, I invite you to be with the spirit of Christ consciousness and, and allow that to enter, uh, you know, paving the way for this spiritual pilgrimage that we've been talking about, this inner transformation, this unfoldment of um, our journey and coming out of the world of effects and circumstances. And, you know, just realizing that that symbolic yearning for, you know, the liberation, spiritual deliverance applies to all of us. You know, Jesus came to set us free of that separation from God, you know, and this, that can look like our perceptions about ourselves, others or circumstances that suppress that, that truth, our true nature, activities or actions in our life that sort of undermine our soul, expectations that lead to disappointment, judgments that can keep us stuck. So uh, on this journey, hmm. Sure. Let's let's enter our own Jerusalem, right, and and awaken to that that new life, that Christ consciousness. And what does that look like as we approach Easter? So, uh, stepping into that rebirth, that renewal, and we're going to explore that today. And I'm I'm so excited about that. Uh, and to kick off this powerful Holy Week, I am thankful that I get to introduce Father Thomas Benacci today, precious human on a profound soul journey. Uh, in his life, an example of immense love and and truly shining the light of Christ uh, wherever he roams. And we are so grateful to have you with us here, Tom, sharing your your inspiration and your wisdom and your spirit and your love. Tom is a dear friend to our community and our appreciation for you is overflowing from our hearts. The talk today is walking with Jesus on the Emmaus road. And 
I just feel the potency and richness of this talk, um, taking us into this, this holy time, into the resurrection of Jesus and what it means to walk with Jesus, brings me to the question we started the month with, with which was, what would Jesus do? Uh, so I will be, will be adding Tom's notes for today in the chat as we begin the talk, and so grateful for for you, Tom. There will not be a workshop today. However, our connection Zoom link is always open for everybody to tune in and jump in and uh, say hi to one another if you should want to do that. That's on our homepage, unityinspiredliving.org, and you'll see the Zoom link there. Just pop in. Everybody's welcome in there. So we also have our magical Asher Stern, and he's with us today sharing his divine musical downloads for us. His music is soul stirring, heart igniting, inspirational. And we're just so deeply grateful when you share your time, your energy and your essence with us, Asher. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes to us. We are so grateful. And we have Nancy with us, Nancy Pimentel. She's just you know, such a life force in our community. I'm so grateful for you, Nancy, and all that you bring to us and share with us. Uh, she's here this morning, shining her beautiful magnificence. Um, and sharing our inspirational reading and our prayer of plentitude and community announcements. And we're so thankful uh, for you here creating this um, beautiful space for us to feel into. Thank you all of you on the other side tuning in. Let me just check in here and say hello and welcome to the Unity Inspired family. When you arrive here, you are family. When you arrive to this space, let us know that you are here with a comment. That way we can uh, commune with you and uh, send you love. You know, we can have this energetic exchange over this platform. Pat is here. She says, wonderful morning. Really interested in what Father Tom has to say about Jesus. Yes. Beautiful. Happy Sunday, everyone. Jennifer says, Florence is here. She says, good morning. Bob is here. Good morning, all. Hi, Bob. Welcome in. Welcome in, Florence and Peggy and Ron and everybody else who's logging in. If I don't see your name, um, welcome. We we welcome you with open hearts and open arms. Uh, so grateful for this this divine time we get to share together, oh, swimming in the radiance of mm, joy and expansion and godness, um, precious souls. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to um, get started. And so I, I would first just invite you to step into the sacred space, you know, however that is for you. Perhaps you take a breath, maybe you light a candle, just kind of move yourself from what I started with saying that head space into the heart space, maybe take that inward breath of the spirit, my favorite definition of inspiration and lean into, lean into the space of love and um, feel into our purpose, which is to be a safe environment for all people to consciously explore their spiritual path, which I say is our life path. Uh, recognize your oneness with, with God, divinity, divine intelligence, gain inspiration, insight, and wisdom to share into the world, uh, to be the light of the world. So thank you for being on this journey with us. Uh, we're grateful we are going to open with our community sing-along. So remember that this is a time when uh, you can connect quickly to your heart. Singing music is just such a beautiful way to to get energy flowing, but also really open our heart space, our throat chakra, all that good stuff. So Asher is here to, to start us off, to bring us into that space this morning. Thank you so much, Asher. We appreciate you. Thank you. Can you hear me? All right. I'm going to do something different this morning since it's, um, the theme is journeying with Jesus. Uh, I figured I'd do a little thing. It reminds me of Whoopi Goldberg, actually. I think maybe you'll get it if you watched the movie a long time ago. Uh, they sang this song, but, um, okay. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. He washed my tears away, oh happy day, 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 when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, 
When Jesus washed, he washed my tears away, tears away. Oh, happy day. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I don't think I've actually sang that in years, so who knows that? I, I love it. Thank you. Yes. Oh, happy day. It is indeed. Thank you, Asher. Appreciate that very much. Very light and beautiful and uh, touching <laughs> and, and, and happy and joyful. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to hand the screen right over here to Nancy now. She has our weekly announcements and uh, our inspired reading for this morning. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Good morning and happy spring, everyone. Let's begin with a few announcements. Uh, there won't be a workshop today. However, please come to the Community Connection via the Zoom connection link on our homepage for a lively discussion with other members. And please join us next Sunday, Easter Sunday on Facebook Live as we welcome Reverend Wendy Silver. And coming soon, our ninth annual yard sale. Time for spring cleaning and clearing the clutter. Start collecting all those things you no longer need or want and plan to bring them to our sale on May 18th. A huge heartfelt thank you to all who are continuing to support the Van Ling Family Fund each month. Much love and gratitude to all. Also, we invite you to consider setting up your monthly contribution commitment to our community, perhaps sending it automatically, monthly via Zelle or PayPal or check. It is your contributions that provide the revenue for speakers and musicians, our spiritual director, our rental space, our storage unit, our celebrations, and all of the other activities we offer each month. We are so very, very grateful for all that you give and how you bless us with your time, talents, and treasures. And thank you to all for keeping your calendars up to date and for your participation in all of our activities consider inviting a friend to join you. Blessings and have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. We appreciate you very much. I'm going to hand the screen back over to Asher now for some more sublime music this morning. Thank you, Asher. All right. happy and the next I feel I'm gonna explode the world is here and we're all on the hill yeah together what can't we all just get along today
I can see what is invisible. I have faith in what I can't control. Oh, 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 oh. it's easy, you busy, you busy, you busy, you said then done. The reason, the reason, the reason, the reason that you are the one is because of love. It's because of love. I wish upon the rising sun. Give thanks and praise till the night is done. Oh, 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 oh. It's easy, you busy, you busy, you busy, you said then done. And the reason, the reason, the reason, the reason that you are the one is because of love. Because of love, because of love, because of Beautiful song, Asher. Thank you. Because of you. love. That says enough. That says it all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to us. Okay, I'm going to hand the screen back over to Nancy. She has our inspirational reading and our blessing of abundance for us this morning. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you. And now for our inspirational reading. Our reading for today on our theme, Journeying with Jesus, is an excerpt from the blog, Unspoken Elements, and is entitled 10 Essential Teachings of Jesus. The teachings of Jesus are at the forefront of Christian morality and ethics. They have also influenced broader society, inspiring people of different faiths and beliefs to live more compassionate, loving, and selfless lives. Here are a few of the most significant of Jesus' teachings. Blessed peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, Matthew 5, 9 is the importance of pursuing peace and reconciliation. Jesus calls us to be peacemakers, seeking to resolve conflicts and promote harmony. This teaching also highlights the role of Christians in promoting justice and seeking to end oppression and violence. Love your enemies. Love your enemies and pray for those who prosecute you. Matthew 5.44 is one of the most challenging teachings of Jesus, calling Christians to love and pray for those who have harmed them. This is because God loves all people and that even those who are our enemies deserve our compassion and forgiveness. This teaching emphasizes the transform transformative power of love and forgiveness. Forgive, for other, forgive others as you want to be forgiven. Matthew 6, 14 through 15 is the importance of forgiveness in the Christian life. Christians are called to forgive others as they have been forgiven by God. This teaching emphasizes the transformative power of forgiveness, which can help to heal relationships and bring peace. The purpose of Jesus' teachings. Jesus' teachings emphasize the importance of love, compassion, forgiveness, and service to others. He taught his followers to love their enemies, to treat others as they would like to be treated, and to put the needs of others before their own. He also emphasized the importance of faith and trust in God and taught his followers to pray and seek God's guidance in all aspects of their lives. And now for the prosperity and blessing. I invite you to join with me now as we move into a space of oneness with spirit. We quiet our minds and open to the great realization of an abundant universe. 
We connect with an inner stillness that is grounded in the divine flow of giving and receiving. We practice gratitude for all that life gives us and accept there is more coming our way. We align and operate from our divine nature to give freely from a compassionate heart to ourselves and others, assured we are never void. We set our intention to engage in right action that attracts opportunities to prosper. We are each a very grateful spirit expanding in this human life. We are gratefully succeeding and stepping forward into greater good. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy, for all of it, all the good stuff you brought to us. I keep hearing our, you know, every once in a while, I feel a divine love song, you know, divine love flowing through me, blesses and multiplies. Thank you. Thank you for you. I'm going to hand the screen back over to Asher now for another song this morning to bring us home. All right. This one's about self-love. Something I struggled with most of my life. I think if we're close to God, however you define a God, I think loving ourselves is one of the best ways we can get there. We all just love ourselves a bit more. And what kind of a world would we be in? Anyway. In a world of chaos and strife, I'm learning to live my own life. Got to embrace the love within. Self-acceptance where I begin I'm jamming to the rhythm of self-love Like the stars shining high above Gonna let my light shine so bright Loving myself, it feels so right In and out do 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 No need to compare or pretend I'm unique, gonna own my blend in the mirror, I see a friend. Embrace my flaws, no need to mend. I'm jamming to the rhythm of self love. Like the waves crashing down from above. Gonna let my heart be my guide. In my own love, I'll reside. Oh, the journey's not always smooth. But I keep dancing, I find my groove. Through the highs and lows, I'll rise. Self-love at my price I stand tall, won't be confined Unleashing love, heart and mind Gonna break these chains of doubt Self-love is what it's all about I'm driving to the rhythm of self-love like the waves crashing down from above Gonna embrace my soul, soul's true song In self-love, I'll be strong Oh, the journey's not always smooth I keep dancing, find my goal Through the highs and lows I'll rise With self-love as my price oh, do 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 I love that song. <laughs> thank thank you. you, Asher. That was perfect. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both, Nancy and Asher, for invigorating, enlivening our space this morning. Um, mm, we we share our gratitude for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, uh, opening this space up. Asher, if um, everyone wants to hear more of you, where can they find you? What's the best way to find more of you? AsherMusic.com is my website for now. I just got a notice saying that the, the domain is canceling soon. So I got to renew it. But AsherMusic.com, I'll renew it. Don't worry. It'll be Don't there. forget to do that. <laughs> I've been there before. Yeah. Asher we'll hold it for a little while, I'll tell you. But, but... <laughs> thanks so much for having Thank me. Thank you, Asher. We're so grateful day. for you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, with deep appreciation, we bless you both and uh, see you on the other side of the, the uh, Zoom. Wow. Blessings. Namaste. Oh, hello.
Hello, everybody. I see you logging in. Remember when you get here to leave a comment in the feed and that way we can all have an energetic exchange with one another and embrace each other as we tune in and you can see everybody's name coming into our space. Um, it's a really beautiful part of our morning and uh, having that uh, exchange on the on the feed. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I am just so grateful that we are here with Father Tom this morning. He's sharing his uh, bright words with us, so his wisdom. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Tom and then pray us in and hand the screen over. For those of you just getting to know Father Tom Bonacci, he's the Interfaith Peace Project's Executive Director. Tom offers friendly and hospitable programs to help participants cope with inherited stereotypes, innocent misunderstandings, embarrassing questions, or general knowledge of the many faith traditions of humankind. Tom was ordained in 1972 for the Passionist Religious Order of the Roman Catholic Church and is recognized for his scriptural scholarship. One of Tom's dreams is the Interfaith Project, involving conversations, projects, and experiments exploring the reality and possibility for the practice and study of interfaith spirituality. Um, and... George D'Angelo, PhD, founder of UN International Day of Peace Vigil, says about Tom, a man of vision, Tom's programs are less about learning of differences and similarities in religions and more about understanding, respecting, and connecting to all humankind. And that is the absolute truth right there. And we have known Tom for years, and we can speak to that as well, the, uh, the heart and soul that Tom brings um, is is truly about connecting all humankind. And we are so grateful for you. I'm going to bring us into the space with prayer and uh, invite everybody in um, with a holy breath, with the holy breath of life into this prayer moment. So grateful to be in this space of faith and knowing that with the faith of a mustard seed, the greater good will pour forth always. And we know the wholeness of the great source, the magnificent power and presence, the almighty presence of God force moving through us is here now always. Our God mind is omnipresent, omniscient. God is, is always moving through our lives. And we realize this truth here and now. And we're grateful for this life we get to, to breathe, to explore, to have the opportunity to feel. And in this moment now, we are covering Tom in prayer and our our love and our deep thanksgiving that he is here saying a sacred yes to us. And we open ourselves to the divine download today, being in this moment, present, fully present. And I release this word into the great law of love, in love, for love, and as love, knowing that it is done in perfection. And so it is, Ashe, namaste. Thank you, Father Tom, for being here with us, handing the screen over to you for our message this morning. Much love. Well, good morning, everyone. It's my blessing and privilege to be with you. I'd like to begin by doing two introductions to the material at hand. In the New Testament, there is a gospel called the Gospel of Luke. On the other side of the crucifixion, namely the resurrection, there is a resurrection account, Luke 24, 13 to 35. It's called The Road to Emmaus. By and large, that episode is unique to the Gospel of Luke, although there are verses in the Gospel of Mark that allude to this event. But in Mark's gospel is two or three sentences, and Luke's gospel is an elaborate scene. And it deals with the theme that you're concerned with in a very accentuated way this month, journeying on the road. Now, let's do some introductory work. In the gospel of Luke, there is a long section in the Gospel of Luke where Jesus is going to leave Galilee and go up to Jerusalem. 
As you know, in the Hebrew Bible, one never goes down to Jerusalem. One always goes up to Jerusalem. So even if the airplane is landing, it's going up to Jerusalem. It is the place of our God. It is considered to be the center of the universe. It is the axis point in the cosmos. So if we look at this material, not simply inside of the Judeo-Christian tradition, but look inside of the tradition that comes from humankind, we can see that in our lives there's always a center to which we go. And sometimes that center is symbolized in a place, but it actually speaks of the journey of the soul. So your feet may be crossing the street, but your soul is crossing the universe, if not the cosmos. The second element that I would like to frame this with is when I was a little boy, I lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, there is an art museum called the Carnegie Institute of Art. I remember as a little boy going to the museum, and I believe that it was on the third floor. I was walking down the hallway of this great museum, and on the wall, there was a painting. An image of that painting is on page three of the notes that we will provide for you today. And it's Jesus in the Emmaus house. It's after Jesus arrives in Emmaus and enters into the house of the disciples. What is striking about Jesus in the house of Emmaus is that he's painted in such a way that he's disappeared. Because one of the hallmarks of Jesus in the resurrection accounts in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is that he's always disappearing. As he said in the Gospel of John, it's good for you that I go away. Now, for many of us who are inspired by Jesus and transformed by Jesus, not simply in the Christian community, but in the interfaith world, because much of what Jesus symbolizes, says, does, and teaches, touches our hearts as human beings and invigorates us to the fullness of light. He's one of those people that if he walked into your life, you don't want him to go away. You want him to stay. You know how sometimes people come to your house and you might love them, but it's, you'll really love them all the more if they go home at 8 o'clock. But there's other people that you wish would stay forever. They not only light up the room, they light up your heart, they touch your life. So if there's one person that we want to have hang around, dwell with us, it would be Jesus. But in the resurrection accounts, he's always disappearing, as he puts it, to get out of your way. Because he's not risen for you, he's the source of your risenness. Now, if you look at that painting on the right side, you'll see that the artist painted his wife his daughter, and himself into the scene of the Emmaus house. And this is a wonderful suggestion or technique for interpretation. Whenever you join a sacred text, a sacred scene, it would be very, very good if you entered into it and simply didn't look at the story, the narrative, the teaching as an object in front of you. Be the subject within it. So today, as we look at the verses from the Gospel of Luke concerning the road to Emmaus, what a commentary that I would like to freely share with you as we walk along the road. Let's paint ourselves into the scene. Let's place ourselves in the scene. Jesus has been crucified, died, and buried. Why? Because he took a stand. He's not 
making suffering sacred or holy in itself. But oftentimes we suffer because we stand up for what is right, good, true, and beautiful. On this Palm Sunday, when Jesus journeys to Jerusalem and enters into the temple, he's not rejecting the temple. He's purifying the temple from anyone who would turn the temple of God or the temple of the heart into an object of consumerization, into a place of profit where you make money or gain power. Remember, for Jesus and for the great teachers of humankind, the closer you are to the divine, the closer you are to the center, the closer you are to the heart, the closer you are to the center of the expanse that is the universe and the cosmos, the more in love you are with the poor, the marginalized, the rejected, and the hated. Especially in the biblical tradition, where God favors the underdog. Desmond Tutu put it this way, God is on the side of those who are being clobbered. Without criticism, but offering some critique, the way we oftentimes celebrate Easter is antithetical to the stories in the gospel. In the gospel, the resurrection of Jesus seems to be a quiet event, a hardly noticeable event. Oftentimes, the disciples are overwhelmed with confusion, bafflement, sorrow, and tears that they can't see what's in front of them. Because what really matters is what they experience deep within them. There is no reason to suppose that the risen Jesus is any different than the Jesus of Galilee, Samaria, and Judea. But oftentimes Jesus is portrayed as victorious. Trumpets blast, parades come, flowers come out. And that's our response to the celebration. But if we look at the text and look at the stories, there's a very quiet presence. Let's pick up verse 13 of chapter 24 of the Gospel of Luke. Now, on that same day of the week, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. This is interesting. They're going from Jerusalem. They're going away from the center. It's Luke's way of saying they're leaving the center of being to chaos, and they are in perfect chaos, seven miles. And as they were walking along the road, they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. And while they were talking, and while they were walking, Jesus himself came near. Now, notice how Jesus comes near them. He doesn't say, I'm risen, blow a trumpet. He starts to walk with them on the road of despair. Have you ever had your heart broken? Have you ever had profound sadness in your life? Have you ever been on the road to nowhere? And oftentimes people come into your life and say, you should do this, you should do that. This is an opportunity. They immediately begin to give you their advice and their wisdom, and they may even challenge you. I'm sure they're motivated by love. But for Jesus, he walks with them. When he does speak, he asks the question, what are you talking about back and forth as you walk along the road? It's amazing. He doesn't say, this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do, this is what you should think, this is what you should feel. But what are you feeling? What are you thinking? What's going on? The two of them were sad. The two of them were heartbroken. 
One of them named Clothus turned to him and said, are you the only living person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what's been going on these past few days? Which is ironic. They're saying to Jesus, are you the only person who doesn't know the story about you? Although they don't recognize who he is. And Jesus, true to form, what things? He's not play acting. He's entering into the despair before he teaches, before he challenges, before he transforms. He touches their wounds. He enters into the broken heart. He goes down into the waters of their sorrow. He walks with them. He swims with them. He's marinated in their blood, sweat, and tears before he has any response. What things? Tell me the story. Things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a great prophet, mighty in word and deed. He was handed over by those who fear him to the authorities. They put him to death. Some women of our community went to the tomb came back with a story that he was risen. But after a thorough investigation, we're not sure. The women astounded us. They said they had seen a vision. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found everything that the women said, but no one has seen him. Imagine, Jesus is not near his tomb. Now he's walking on the road of despair. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are, how slow to believe. Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer and die and enter into his glory? And Luke takes that beautiful word that is the expectation of so many people, the Messiah, someone who will come and touch our hearts. And of course, if we look at this from a deep spiritual point of view, hardly a day goes by when somebody's not our Messiah when someone doesn't come and walk with us. Hardly a day goes by when you and I are not called to walk with someone else in the brokenness of life. When Jesus says, was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer? He's not becoming the victim of the inevitable, but entering into the consequence of love. Sometimes people come to me and say, Tom, we would like to get married. I said, oh, how wonderful. You want to get married. You sure you want to get married? It'll break your heart. Well, what do you mean? One of you might get sick. One of you might die. One of you might become incapacitated. Then what? Are you sure you want to put yourself into a loving situation? Love and suffering, they go together. One spouse gets a head cold and the other one has to blow their nose. One loses the job, both are devastated. The pain, the sorrows, the anguish of one becomes the pain, the sorrow, the anguish of the other. Do you really believe that your love is stronger than death? Stronger than suffering? Yes, yes, we do. Oh, what what a, say for, for a lot of us ministers, having a wedding is like, well, that's easy. There's no passion in that. There's no, are you kidding me? In the Bible, in the New Testament, it concludes with God marrying us. Here you see Jesus taking the anguish of the disciples into himself. He isn't talking about the nails that were driven into his hands. He's talking about the sorrow of other people that floods his heart. Think of the suffering that's in your life. 
many times that suffering is not in your life because you did something wrong, but because you did something right. You walked on somebody else's road. You walked with somebody else's heart. You walked hand in hand with another person and their sorrow, their devastation, their hurt became one with you. What do you think it means to journey on the road, to go on a tour? Is to discover how magnificent the heart is. Not even death can prevent it from loving. Verse 27, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them for him and how the scriptures applied to him. But Luke doesn't give you one word of explanation. All Luke says is that Jesus explained it. I want to know what Jesus said. What's the explanation? We don't have it. Or do we? We would have to go down into our hearts, deep into our souls, and pay deep attention to our lives. Because we're not going to hear what Jesus said 2,000 years ago. People who love Jesus and follow Jesus do not hear Jesus in the past. They hear him in the present. As that great song says, he walks with me, he talks with me. Well, finally, they got to the place to which they were going, a house in Emmaus. And Jesus acted as if he was going to leave them. Remember, he always disappears. He never intrudes. They got to the home. It's time for him to leave. They held him back, saying, stay with us. It's late in the day. Come dwell with us. They invited Jesus into their home. Now, here's how you know with Jesus, because he walks into their home, goes to their table, and finds their bread. If you ever want to have Jesus show up, just put a cup of wine and a loaf of bread on the table, and you will have Jesus. He will emerge. He can't go anywhere without bread and wine. One day I went into a bakery in Berkeley. It was nothing but bread. I almost passed out. All this bread. One woman said to me, you look like you're in love with the bread. No, the bread's in love with me. It wants to become Jesus, and especially become Jesus when you break it and feed the hungry. That's why a broken heart and a broken loaf, many of us have broken hearts. Who do we feed? It's a compassion born out of the brokenness. He sat at their table, he took their bread, he blessed their bread, broke their bread, and fed them with their bread. They ate the bread, and their eyes were open, their hearts were open, and they recognized who he was. Then he disappeared from their sight. They ran back to Jerusalem and said, wasn't it like fire burning within our hearts as he walked with us on the road? But I'd like to center just for a moment, if you don't mind, in that table scene. He took their bread. He blessed their bread and fed them with their bread. If anything summarizes the teaching, the person, the love, and the spirit of Jesus is that moment. Bread is the symbol of our lives. Jesus is the kind of teacher and servant and master and slave of love who takes your life 
as if it's bread and hands it back to you so that you can taste the sweetness, learn from its beauty, become its compassion for others. It's bread for the journey. Thank you, sacred community that gathers here today. Because I know for many of you, your hearts are broken, if not about something personal, about much of what goes on in the world, from the Middle East to the Ukraine, to all the division and hatred that's in the United States. That broken heart is your bread of life. Let compassion be born from its brokenness, that we may feed one another along the journey. It's not simply a wonderful story of what might have happened 2,000 years ago. It's a wonderful insight into what's happening in the here and now of life. Be at peace. Love you. Oh, wow. It's like we need a moment to uh to digest. This always happens when you're here. <laughs> this is not unusual uh response uh for me. This was a, a very powerful and um touching talk message. Let me check in with everybody on our feed and see um, comments. Please drop any comments, questions, thoughts, feelings, uh, epiphanies. Mm -hmm. So many, so much beauty in your, in your share today. <laughs> I know Jenny, right? Jenny says totally. Amy's like, okay, we, we need a moment. Um, I, I certainly um, feel the message deeply. And, you know, I mean, many of you heard my talk at the beginning of the month, so you know my uh, connection with Jesus. So the message, Tom, that you brought for us today is, is so beautiful. Uh, let's, let's just check in here with everybody. Carol says, mm -hmm. I love this. Oh, so I posted here. I posted the notes in the feed. And if you would like a copy of the feed, I could not post the, the picture of the table that Tom was referring to, but I will send you the notes if you email me, amy at unityinspiredliving.org. Carol says, I love this. Thank you. God favors the underdog. Um, appreciate this teaching. Someone will come and touch our hearts. Consequences of love, love and suffering. God marrying us, sorrow that floods his heart. Thank, these, these are not these are great notes along the way here. Suffering is sacred, Pat says. Carol says, compassion born out of the brokenness. Jenny says, beautiful message, Tom. Compassion born from brokenness. Yeah, you know, it's like the space of like keep breaking open, you know. I think um, sometimes when people feel the brokenness or that pain. Uh, they want to sort of close in, right, and protect. Like, just I don't want to feel that. And so, the the to can allow the brokenness to continue breaking you open to just feel the deep compassion and um, the bread of life. It's the bread of life. I mean, that is is such a perfect, beautiful explanation. Um, Lynn says, "Powerful sermon." That says, feed one another out of our own brokenness. <laughs> Nan says, thank you. Deep, meaningful message. Bob says, thank you. That was great info. Luinda says, thank you, Father Tom. I think Jesus was the ultimate teacher of what it is all about. Love, compassion, understanding, and forgiveness for all, no matter what. Marianne says, love this talk. Thank you. Made me weep. Me too. <laughs> I'm, you probably can tell. <clears throat> Jennifer says, thank you, Father Tom. As always, so powerful. I am deeply touched by your message. 
Yes, I think that all resonates definitely for me. I think for all of us, uh, truly. I mean, depth, depth here. You know, you we you can you can feel that. Uh, Maria says it's just about developing the Christ consciousness in us, not just believing in Jesus, but be like Him toward our fellow humans. Right. Yeah. This goes back to like knowing, having the knowledge in our head, we can, we can understand, we can read all the stories about Jesus. It's, <laughs> it's about the embodiment, right? The actual integration of the timeless message of Jesus in the here and now. And that's what Tom spoke to today. And not just, yeah, not just believing in Jesus, but yeah, being Jesus to our fellow humans. Bob says he is smarter than all of us. Um. Carol says, so profound, touched my heart deeply. Tears. Yes, <laughs> me too. Katie says, tears flow as I feel Jesus's love flowing through you and through me. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Jan says, Tom, I love the understanding of the scriptures you share. Tom, so heartfelt and much healthier perspective than I was taught for many years. Made me cry when you spoke about marriage. So true. Love does not die at death. And yet it was all worth it. I think that's Jan coming in as unity inspired living. There's a handful of us that can come in as admins on that page. Dave or Jan, I think that's you, Jan, right? Um, uh, yes, it, it's a, it's a deep message today. You know, I love just, he walks with me and talks with me. Um, compassion born out of the brokenness. I know that resonated with a lot of you. Jesus takes your life and it's bread. And so you can taste the sweetness of compassion. He gives the bread back to you. I mean, what a, what a deep message today. I think we're all, it's all just like settling in because I wish I had written it down, but it was so profound. You said something about the journey, you know, what does that journey look like? It's like feed the others along the way. Like, what is the journey? What is the journey? Thank you, Tom, for, sir, for bringing us this potency. It was Kathy. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Um, that was Kathy who was talking about that. I thought, may, I, I I was wondering, yeah, made me cry when you spoke about marriage. So true. Love does not die at death. <clears throat> yes. Here are you, Kathy. Um, Thank you so much uh, for bringing Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank everybody. On this journey, this journey with Jesus is is deep. Yeah. Some people understand the journey to Emmaus as the journey to nowhere. In other words, it's, it's, it's not a destination as such, but it's the road of despair. And imagine he who has every reason to rejoice in the fullness of life the first action in the resurrection account in his heart is to walk in the road of someone else's despair. That's what we do. What we do. Yeah. And we do it together. We do it, we together. Do it together. Yeah, I think that's the that's the uh, piece of importance here, right? Is, you know, when we say we're on this pilgrimage together, it's like we... We need each other on this path. Yeah, Pat says, Tom, we love you so much. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Love you. <laughs> Jenny says, sometimes we have to walk the road of despair. Yeah, I mean, don't we all? At some time or another, right? It's a message for all of us. Uh, Luinda says, wonderful to hear and see you again, Father Tom. As usual, you touch our hearts. Yes. True. We love you. We appreciate you, Tom. Thank you for sharing uh, so much depth with us and, and insight and wisdom. And we always love to see from your lens. You always bring a, a beautiful, unique message to us that we are so so deeply thankful for you enrich us so, so much thank you thank you 
Oh, bless. everybody. God bless. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Depth uh, from the depths of our hearts and everybody here. Thank you for tuning in and, and receiving, like being on the receiving end of this potent, powerful talk today. And uh, just a reminder that we are so grateful for all of the energetic exchange that you share with us. We we are here thriving because of your your giving, your hearts. And uh, so thank you. We are going to close for our prayer with our prayer of divine awakening now, which I'm going to share on our screen. Uh, I know Tom has somewhere to, to be today. So thank you, Tom. Our link is open though for community connection, as we mentioned earlier this morning. Please feel free, free to jump in there. You know, uh, we might, <laughs> there might be some of you who feel uh, really wanting the space to connect about this talk because it was just, it was so beautiful and, and potent. Um, more messages coming in here. This is very comforting for our hearts and souls. Thank you so much, Tom. I always love your deep, insightful talks. Yes, indeed. Lots of gratitude flowing through. So I'm going to share the screen now with everybody with, uh, with our prayer of divine awakening. At home, feel into it, speak it out loud, make it yours, a declaration for your life. It's a new day, a beautiful day, a new beginning. I embrace this day with new eyes and open heart and expansive mind. I choose my vibration, vibrational frequency deliberately and consciously harmonizing with life's events. I am receptive to source energy, divine guidance and wisdom available to me at all times. I commit to serve unconditional love fully and completely, and I'm forward in a state of appreciation, extension of the one magnificent power and presence. I am sovereign, whole, and free, claiming dominion over my life as I go in peace and awaken to my divinity. And so it is as we journey into this high holy week, beloved beings, shine on, uh, be with this 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 path this week, this journey um, to the resurrection. It's my favorite week of the year. So blessings, everybody. Tune in. Like I said, if you would like a copy of all Tom's notes um, in one spot versus how I did it here in the feed, just email me, amy at unityinspiredliving.org, and I will send those over to you. Thank you, Tom. Blessings, love, peace. God bless. Goodbye, everybody. We love you. Mwah.